Hello, I'm Lori Barakopensky, Director of the Information Policy Analysis Division of the Minnesota Department of Administration, also known as IPAD. This presentation is an overview on employment records of government employees, known as personnel data under the Minnesota Data Practices Act. As you may know from IPAD's other resources, the presumption in Minnesota law is that all data are public unless otherwise classified. Clearly, government maintains a lot of data because someone is a current or former employee. Personnel data is defined in Minnesota Statute Section 1343 as all government data on individuals collected, maintained because an individual is or was an employee of the government, as well as for applicants for employment, volunteers, and independent contractors. Section 1343 actually reverses the general presumption that all data are public unless otherwise classified. Specifically, Subdivision 4 protects all data about employees by making it private. And Subdivision 2A sets out certain elements as public. Some examples of data about employees that are public are the employee's name, salary, job title, previous work experience, and work telephone number. Government employees maintain lots of data through their job duties, but not all data that an employee has are personnel data. To be personnel data, it must be data on individuals. In other words, a person must be the subject of the data. Clearly, some data that an employee creates in the course of their work are not data about that employee. For example, I'm giving a presentation. I have a copy of it on my computer. I am not the subject of the presentation, so it is public under the general presumption. Subdivision 3 covers data about most applicants for public employment. The following data are public for all current and former applicants. Veteran status, relevant test scores, rank on eligible list, job history, education and training, and work availability. You'll notice that an applicant's name isn't public. The name stays private until the applicant is certified as eligible for appointment to a vacancy or becomes a finalist. A finalist is defined as someone who is selected to be interviewed by the appointing authority prior to selection. For example, a city council can create a search team of citizens and staff to locate qualified applicants for a job. But the search team wouldn't have any hiring power. The names on the search team's list would remain private until the appointing authority the person or people with hiring power decides who on the list to interview. The people selected for interviewing by the hiring authority become finalists, thus making their names public. Next, I'm going to talk about what happens when employees get disciplined. Let's say government receives a complaint about one of their employees. While the government is investigating, there isn't much about the situation that's public. Subdivision 2A4 says that only the existence and status of the complaint or charge is public. So what's public is that there's a complaint about Bonnie and that it's under investigation. Everything else about the complaint is private. Now if the government finds that the complaint was completely baseless, no other data become public. And all the remaining data related to the investigation stay private. But if the government finds that something bad did happen and decides to discipline, more data becomes public once a final decision happens. So for data on discipline to change from private to public, a final disposition has to happen. Subdivision 2B explains that a final disposition happens when the government makes its final decision about the discipline, regardless of the possibility of any later proceedings, including court proceedings. So let's say that you're a non-union county employee. After investigating a complaint, the county decides to suspend you. The decision to suspend you is the county's final decision about discipline, or final disposition. After final disposition, more stuff becomes public, like the final decision itself, along with the specific reasons and data that support or documents the basis for the action to discipline you. So if you resign after the county's decision to suspend you, the extra public data about the discipline stays public, now let's say I am a unionized city employee. If the city decides to suspend me after investigating a complaint, I have the choice to grieve my suspension. If I grieve my suspension, there is not a final disposition until after arbitration, and the additional data about the discipline remain private. If I lose an arbitration, then the additional data become public at that point. 
Certain people in high-level state government positions get treated differently when there is a complaint about them. These folks are defined as public officials. Public officials are defined as heads of a state agency or their deputies or assistants, members of boards or commissions the governor must appoint or other elective officers, and executive or administrative heads of departments, bureaus, divisions, or institutions. If you are in state government, learn this definition and figure out who it applies to in your agency. The Data Practices Act is also silent on whether elected officials are government employees. The Commissioner has issued a number of advisory opinions stating that if the government considers its elected officials to be employees, data about them can be covered by Section 1343. On the flip side, if government does not consider its elected officials to be employees for data practices purposes, data about them are public under the general presumption. If you have elected officials, check out the Commissioner's opinions as well as Minnesota Statute Section 13.601. Subdivisions 1 and 2, which classify certain data about these individuals. Many government entities have policies that allow employees to have some personal use of government-owned equipment, like computers and telephones. If your government entity has a policy like this, it would be an example of when the government has data that are outside the scope of the Data Practices Act. We encourage you to review the Commissioner's advisory opinions as well as other resources on our website to help you sort out the personnel data issues you may face. And as always, email or call us if you need extra help.